Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract, and I don't have internet still. I've done a series of these tutorials without internet, just because uh, <laughs> nothing else to do if you don't have internet. So I've enjoyed doing them, of course, and, but I may not be able to go out and show you examples. That's fine. Uh, what I will show you now, though, is let's uh, go and take a look. And this is what we built last time was a puzzle. Now well, that's probably down here and this is up there and that's at the top. So we made that puzzle. Uh, great. And there's the code for the puzzle. This part right here does the puzzle. Uh, let's save this up and we're going to make a pages. So we're going to work with pages. We did a book in the, in the one before that where you turn pages in a book, but you don't always want a book where people are turning pages. Sometimes you just want to move from screen to screen. So we're going to show you how we can do that. Okay, so to do that, we'll reduce this down here. We'll remake this one. File, save as. And we'll call this one 13. Pages, pages like so, and good. What does that mean? What's this? I don't know. Is that the current pages? So let's go F9. Do probably okay. Thirteen, and this is pages like that. We're given the frame, the stage, the width, and the height like that. We've got a width of 1024 by 1024, but let's shift that to our standard one, 768. So 1024 by 768. We will be bringing in some assets so we could leave that stuff, but we'll recreate it. So here we are and let's have a look, control enter. Now we have our traditional sort of size of screen there. And what we're envisaging is we're putting something on page one. We swipe or we hit an arrow and we go to page two and page one will slide this way and page two will come in. And then I could go to page three and page four. So Zim has a pages class that handles that and we can add anything, any display object to the pages class. We used to add containers. So each page was stored in a container. But after years of people asking, how do you make a page? And we kept on saying, make a container. We finally made a page class as well. So we now have a pages class and a page class, which is just a container <laughs> with, a backing, with a backing color, if you need it. Uh, backing colors are trickier than you might imagine. Um, we have to kind of honor the fact that containers have children. And if we make a page class, then and we put a backing in it, that's going to be a child. So you end up surprising people. Oh, surprise, by the way, you've already got a child in that. So it's like, eh, you know, whatever. Um, that uh, just remember that the backing of a page is uh, a child of that page, which is really a container. So let's set it up. Why don't we make a page right here so we can make a new page. And we then say how big it is. So probably if we want the whole screen to show up, that's great. We can do that. Otherwise, what we would probably do is make a container of a certain dimension and put all our pages in that container, put the pages objects in there. And then um, when we make the pages object, we can say what the container is. And what it will do is it will crop the pages to that because we got to swipe from page to page. If I had the internet, I'd show you an example right now. Anyway, we want to swipe to page to page. You can imagine we don't want that page sort of <laughs> leaving the container it's supposed to be in and, and moving off to the left while another one comes in magically from the right. So we, we need to sort of um, do what's called masking and uh, that will all handle it. But if your pages are as big as the stage, then we don't have to worry about it. We're going to make pages as big as the stage, so we don't have to worry about it right now. Uh, width and height and then the page has a nice thing we can say green here so there's the backing color and we'll dot center that on the stage and we get this so now we have a green page super that's as big as the stage ah green page as big as the stage next though we want to uh, show you if you put in another parameter blue here's what happens it's kind of cool so pages will automatically uh, go from a green to a blue there, like that, I don't know if, if we want that. But uh, this page was made when we hadn't operated on the Zim radial color and gradient color. I guess gradient color first is more basic one. This is a great, this would be the equivalent to a gradient color going down. 
Well, it was a little bit tricky to make a gradient color at the time. We had to put in an array of colors, an array of uh, proportions of those colors, and then followed by an X and a Y, and another X and a Y to where it was going, I think. Uh, so, no, uh, yeah, something like that anyway. And then it would make a gradient from the first X and Y to the next X and Y. And so that was just a bunch of stuff. Now we've got it, gradients are easier. Um, you can just put in the array of colors and actually it would make a gradient going from left to right. But if you want it going down, if you put 90, that's the, the angle. So by default, that's zero going this way across. Uh, 90 would be down. Then you would just say an array. So a new gradient color, the array of colors, and then 90 would get you this. But it used to be harder. So we thought, hey, what could we give? What could we, you know, what features could we give a page? And we said, okay, we'll make it easy, easy gradient. Yay. <laughs> so there's your easy gradient. That's still, you know, nice like that. Uh, we can choose that. Did I show you the pictures that we're going to, to, to um, put on here? Here's some right here. So we've been working with heads and I thought, hey, uh, whenever we show these videos on YouTube, people see them. And we've already done uh, a, uh, a book with the heads. We've done a, a puzzle with the heads. And if we did pages with the heads, you know, it would have been fine, but we'd be looking at the heads, heads, heads. So we said, okay, let's choose something different this time. And we grabbed these AI art. This was AI art, by the way, <laughs> turning out quite handy. Uh, I do, I do a fair bit. <laughs> <laughs> an inventor, so <laughs> I do a fair bit. But I'm in VR. I have a, a place called the Pagoda Scope. We dance in there. I do videos for the Pagoda Scope. I put AI in the videos. We also have the Prompt Gallery. Uh, we, the Royal, we have the Prompt Gallery, and we're just having an opening on Wednesday. That's tomorrow. If the internet works out, my God, I've got this big opening. I'm, I'm streaming the video live into VR. Uh, we got hundreds of people, average 150 people at these parties coming in from around the world, and my internet has been acting up. It's like, ah! Anyway, uh, this is some of the, the leftover art. Actually, this one right here, this picture is the front of the prompt gallery. These guys looking uh, down at you. Cool, huh? So what we're gonna do is we'll put these on the pages. We'll just show you a little bit of uh, how we can lay out. Um, there is, uh, there are complexities for scaling as in responsive and adaptive design. And Zim's got all that um, available. It's called the layout class and it's it's simple to use, but the coding in behind is quite complex. It's actually equivalent to what Adobe Flex was doing. I don't know if you ever worked in Adobe Flex. It was XML-based, uh, FML or whatever it was, XML-based sort of interface to be able to provide flexible regions that would change. And that eventually became the Flexbox, probably the same type of code. Well, we've got that in the layout class. Um, it's complicated code to be able to make these regions scale with one another in various ways. But the layout class is there uh, in Zim, but we're not gonna do layout class. That's more for mobile when you have different size screens. Right now we're just sort of hard coding on an imagined screen here of 1024 by 768. So we'll lay these out we could just place them on the stage and move them around. There, Zim's got this thing called place. Of course, you're using Adobe Animate. You would just put them in the IDE and place them in the IDE if you so desire. And you can do that. You could put then those movie clips that you're making. If that's how you're organizing this stuff is in movie clips, you just put the movie clip into the pages class and put another movie clip into the pages class. And that should do it. Uh, we can... Can't clone, but I think we can cache movie clips, hopefully. So anyway, the caching is kind of important uh, when animating pages from one to the other. But anyway, that's all done automatically in the background. So what we could do, we got five of these, it looks like. Um, so it might be easiest to just tile them across one page, and then we'll put these two on the one page. We could, why don't we show you without tile for these two? Yeah, tiling two things is a bit lame. And then we'll tile these other ones. So that way you get to see some positioning in Zim without tile and some positioning uh, with a tile. And this is what we're doing when we're making, uh, not using animate. So here's page one. Let's call it that. Const page one is equal to a new page. And I don't know if those are the colors we want. Maybe let's go to a 
light and a fog or something like that. We've got mist and fog and silver and <clears throat> tin. Light and lighter, that also looks good. Uh, and let's have a look and see what where we're sitting. That's a that's a bit too dark for these. What I'm what I'm imagining is these these first two on some sort of page background. Uh, how about we go uh, mist here? So mist is a little lighter, and we'll go lighter because we're on a white background at the moment. The the outer color is white, you know, which is fine. Okay, that's probably good. I mean, you know, as a as a gray one, and we'll see what we do for the next page. <coughs> okay, so that's page one, and now we'll add some things to it. We need those assets. We don't need them that badly, so we could just lazy load them and probably do, or we could do the load assets that we've been doing from the last part, but let's just lazy load them. A new pick, and the first one was called uh, Interior 01 interior dot png oh sorry zero one with no underscore dot png and we'll set a path for that as well path is equal to so this is the global way that we can set a path it's called pages uh, slash but all that's in quotes so quote there and a quote over here okay there we go and then we'll just for now we'll center it on to page one. That's not a bad thing to do to start. And then we get that. All right, so we can't even see page one anymore because it happens to be, I think, well, this picture is a little bit wider. Have a look. So there we go. But we'll want to scale that smaller. So we could just scale it by eye, or we could do a scale two, but a SCA 0.5. Let's have a look and see what a half scale looks like. That looks pretty good. Can we get two of them on there? I don't know. One up above and one down below. That that was the idea. What do you think? Yeah, it looks, looks about right, I think. So instead of centering it this way, what we'll do is we'll pose it at zero in the X and maybe try 100 down and we will uh, make that from the left and from the top on the page. So I'll drop this down so you guys can see that. So we're positioning a zero, oops, from the center. So zero from the center, 100 down from the top, and on page one, we might want 50 down. I'll have to take a look at that. And we go page one, and that gives us, that gives us this. But I don't think the, the, second, the second one is gonna go down in there. All right, so um, one way to do it would be to just put them both in a container and then center the container after, and then we don't have to worry so much about this. As a matter of fact, that's what we would be basically doing if we tiled it, and then we wouldn't worry. But I said we'd go to the tile next. Let's just uh, handle the manual way for these ones. So I'm copying that and putting it in here almost. It looks like that can just go like that. And this is gonna be interior two, and then we'll say bottom. Uh, once again, our manual scaling, if we can spell the word bottom on page one, is leading us to a little bit of an overlap, an overlap. I think we could go with a bit smaller on the scale. So we'll go to point four on this once again. And there, there we are. That's a fine page. Ah, 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 ah. Do you like? Okay. And you can put some text on there, We, uh, but... If you're an animate, you'd probably be laying this out. This is what animates for, or one of the things anyway, you'd be laying this out in a movie clip or something like that um, on your stage. And then you would bring the movie clip in. Probably we should have shown you that. <laughs> anyway, it's been so long since we've actually worked in Flash. Oh, we miss it in animate that um, we're quite used to doing this the Zim way. And you might want to see uh, using it the Zim way as well. These are, after all, Zim tutorials. So forgive me if you're looking at this going, why didn't you just drag and drop those onto the stage or into a movie clip? Okay, fine, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, so we've positioned page one there and let's make page two as well. So we can comment this stuff out for now. Uh, we can't do it that way. Right click and say comment. 
wouldn't mind a hotkey for that. <clears throat> um, page two. So, well, that's going to be roughly the same as page one. And what we're going to do is we're going to end up using the page. We'll pass page one and page two into our pages. If we had any more pages, we could make those two. Uh, there is a new page. Let's make it a slightly different color. Why don't we go with, how about a dark, uh, we'll do a dark version of it, darker. Dark, dark to darker, darker. And let's have a look at page two now, control enter. Okay, and we're going to end up having all of those models on that page. Will it look nice? Well, I don't know. We'll see. We can always do some adjust afterwards. So I actually don't think it's going to look too nice. They don't have to be the same color, but it might be, well, you know, whatever. Let's, I'll leave it like this, I suppose. Try it out. And now we're going to do our tile. Um... For a tile to work, let's see, a tile is doing some complex things. It's, it needs to know the widths and heights of these, these images. So we, we, if we preload, we would have width and height. If we know the width and height, we can pass in the width and height, and then it should work just fine. So let's, let's try that. So we'll make an array. Const picks is equal to a new array. And in this array, we're going to have a new pick. And the pick come from new pit pock pick pick and it's going to be something like a quote what are they all called model zero one model zero one dot png okay now if we do that that will go and make a pick but it will preload that pick and it doesn't currently know the width of that it will eventually know the width of it then we're going to try and tile these. So const tile is equal to a new tile. You really didn't need to say const tile, I don't think. But anyway, a new tile. And what we're going to be tiling is this array of picks like that. And however many we have, we had five of them times one plus a spacing, say 30. And there won't be any vertical spacing, but whatever, we can put 30 there. And this is important, unique. Because if we pass in an array of pictures, tile will, <coughs> excuse me. If we pass in an array of pictures, tile will automatically randomly pick from that array because that's a ZIMV value. So by passing in the unique, uh, by the way, the, the way around that, even if we didn't have unique would be um, to say no pick. But anyway, I'll leave that. Uh, so we pass in picks. Uh, there's going to be five of them. Are there five? Yeah, five times one. This is how many rows. Spacings. This could be null, I guess, because we don't even have anything there. So we'll just leave it null. And then unique says keep those, don't pick from them, treat them as each individual objects. And that's fine. And then we're going to, we'll center this. It's going to be really bad in scale, but if we go ska dot ska point five or something like that, then that should be doing it. But anyway, it needs, as it's building this tile right away, before these are even loaded, it needs to know how big all of this stuff is. And it won't rec... Some, some things, like what we did up here when we centered it, what it does is it will... Um, so when we had that other... This page right here, when we were sticking things on, what it actually does is says, oh gosh, you know, I can't quite center it yet in this positioning. I can't quite do that yet because it's not loaded and I don't know how big it is. But I'll remember that you want me to center something. And then when it loads in, then I'll recall the center and recall the pose and center it. So we've built a whole system in behind to automatically do that. Probably like HTML did. I don't know if you remember back in the early days of HTML, pages didn't know how to lay out the page if we didn't give it dimensions. So it was always very important to give pictures dimensions. And then the whole page could lay out while these pictures sort of slowly loaded in. Otherwise, nothing would be seen because it didn't know how to lay it out. So that's how they treated it. Then finally, they figured out how to do this lazy loading stuff. And we've done that in Zim. It's just the tile is extremely complicated um, because there's more to it than just your traditional tiling. There's all sorts of squeezings. There's, uh, there's all sorts of stuff in behind there. And so we need to know the dimensions before we run the tile. 
which point it's not too hard because we actually do know the dimensions of these. They are, I'm just looking over here, they're all the same, and they are 896 by 2304. 896, 2304. 896, 2304. 896, 2304. And so that's pretty big, actually. <laughs> Probably could have reduced those in Photoshop, for instance, um, before we bring them in, because there's no way that we need that, that resolution. But anyway, so be it. Um, and that's also another reason why we might want to preload this. If we were actually putting this out on the internet, we would want to preload them. We saw preloading in the last two examples, so I'm not going to bother at this time, I don't think, anyway. So that should do it if we put in those dimensions. Now it's just a matter of copying these lines. Boop, 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 boop. And how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five. And this is model two, model three, model four, model five. Obviously, we're seeing that we could have looped to create this, but you also saw that it's pretty darn fast just copy and pasting. <laughs> okay. And let's see what we got. We, uh, I, don't, I don't know, that, I don't think that's going to be enough. We have a scale two, and that's probably what we would end up wanting to do is a scale two there. But here's what uh, it looks like broken at the moment. It says unique is undefined. Oh, crap. Uh, unique is true. So that's the unique parameter, and we set it to true. Control enter, and as you can see, we've got a tile, but it's too big. Um, so we could just do it this way, eyeball it and say 0.3 and go, okay, it's better, but it's still too big. How about 0.1? And we put it in here and it's like, oh darn, it's too small. Oh crap, I got the wrong picture. <laughs> so when we went out to do the, um, here's the picture right here, let me show you. It's kind of annoying. Uh, <laughs> The part I want to show you is right underneath this thing. Figure, oh, there it goes. Okay. So when we went to go put this in the gallery, we were testing out to see if we put the words on it here. There it is. Prompt, 60s fashion model, hyper-realistic. Prompt, by the way, is what you type into an AI, uh, and then it gives you a picture. That It's called the prompt, and we have the prompt gallery. But anyway, there, um, there's the wrong picture there. Okay. Uh, I'd really like to change that. It won't take but a moment. So here is the imagine, and then it was in the crypto, was it? Yeah, there it is, and there's the right one, and I'll copy that. Sorry, all this is off screen, isn't it? And uh, pick the copy. And then which directory do I want to go into? My animate, and then tutorials, and pages. Okay, and paste. Paste is right there. Uh, we have now these new little icons here, and I'm still getting used to them anyway for copy and paste and stuff. I think I mentioned that before. So there's that one. We don't want Model 5 anymore, so we'll delete Model 5 and F2 Model 05. Uh, good. Okay, so we got the right model in there. And if I refresh that, mm, I don't know, maybe it goes and grabs those pictures and puts them somewhere because that didn't update. So... Go back through our history there. So I go control enter and it's still showing the wrong one. Why would that be? I put it in the wrong place. Is it a caching issue? Refresh. Shift refresh. No. Model 05 in tutorials inside pages. There it is. Well, for the sake of brevity, let's, it might be a caching issue. Let's call it model 06. And in here, model. 06 and control enter. Okay, I think it was just a caching issue. So that's too small for a page. Remember, this is this dark stuff is our page. We want to probably bring that out a little bit bigger. Also add a bit of, or maybe call it 50 there and 0.15. I could show you the scale two. Why don't I do that? So the scale two, scale two, not ska two, but a scale two the stage or the page, I guess it could be. Page two probably would be better to say. Page two, just in case it's not the same size as the page. Let's drop this down. Feeling claustrophobic in here. Why is that? Uh. Um, okay, scale two dot center, uh, scale to the page. That would, by default, if you just don't put anything, it 
fits it, it fills it, so it will fill the page with it. We did that because when we teach kids, um, they often have background pictures and stuff, and the easiest way to get a background picture in there is just say scale to, and by default it would be the stage, I think, and it just automatically scales it to fill it. For us grown-ups, we can say something like 90% of the width, and we know it's the width that's the issue, so that's all we need, and we go control enter, and now you see that we're at 90% the width. If the height were going to come into play here, which it's not, <coughs> then um, we could scale to say whatever, 90% the width or 90% the height. Um, but there we go. So you see, that's not all that hard to do, is it? What we've just done is added a bunch of picks to a tile and scaled that to our page. And there we go. Even if you had an IDE, that would have been a kind of annoying to do. I'm not sure if there's any tiling features, and there might be, I'm not sure, but any tiling features in Flash. But I would say that doing what I just did without having to describe it to you guys <laughs> would have been faster than actually doing it in the IDE. And that's what I found for, um, even when I was working back in Flash extensively, I would make everything almost always in code anyway. Okay. So uh, there we go, there's our page two, great. But now we wanna to get to the point, how do we get from page one to page two? Uh, all this stuff, by the way, could be interactive as well. So th that could have been a scrambler that we just made and we could have sc scrambled them. Oh, well, it's not really a puzzle, is it? That looks nice though, doesn't it? Um, we could click it and pop up a pane to get more information. So all this stuff can be interactive as well, and usually is when you're building, but I'm just demonstrating how to lay out pages at the moment. And so let's do that. Uh, here's page one. So we don't want both page one and page two on there at the same time. I'm sorry, my hotkey doesn't work to do that. Uncomment. We don't want them on there at the same time. So uh, here's the page right here. In other words, we don't even add them. So we don't bother centering that. And this is the second page right here. We don't, you know, actually we don't need to center the page because it's the same size as the stage. We should have just used an add to. So both those things would have had an add to. <clears throat> we don't need them, okay? So if we go control enter, we were supposed to see nothing because we centered the tile <clears throat> on the stage. We're supposed to center it on page two. Okay, let's just do a check on that. That means we do actually want to see page two for now, dot add two and control enter. Here is our page two. There's our tile centered on page two or, or centered on page two, but also scale to page two. Great, that's all good. Now, if we remove page two, <laughs> what had happened there is I thought I removed page two and I was expecting to see this and I ended up seeing still that tile which was centered on the stage. Okay, so our, our, we make our pages, each, each page we make, we just temporarily view it and say, good, that's ready. And we go on to the next one, good, that's ready. Then we just hide them all because it's pages that's going to show them. And now we go like this. Um, yeah have to put it in a variable, but we probably might need to reference it later if we want to get events. <clears throat> like to find out if you've gone from page one to page two, sometimes you might want to start an animation. Well, then you would capture an event saying, hey, we just went to a page. What page was it? Page two. Oh, do this animation. Um, we've got some good examples of that, some nice e-learning quiz type things with multiple pages, and you can have a look at that. I can't see it right now because we don't have internet. <laughs> anyway, so pages, a uh, new pages. And probably we just pass it uh, an array of pages. That's most likely. Um, shall we try it? Just see if it works from a default. We are wanting to do page one and page two and dot center or dot add two in this case. Uh, because it's the same size and we go control enter. Oh, oh, I don't see anything. So did we get an error? F12, maybe those weren't the first two. Cannot access pages before initialization. Oh, Flash did that, or sorry, Animate did that. Remember if I call this pages the same as my class, it automatically, watch this, right? 
Uh, pages is equal to a new capital P pages, round brackets, drops that to a lowercase p. <laughs> like, come on, cut it out. Pages. Okay, control enter. And there's our first page. We swipe to the right and there's our second. Oh, darn. Uh, so we're, we have the two pages. We can swipe them. We haven't put in any arrows or any buttons or whatever we want to get from page one to page two, but we can swipe. That's, uh, that's cool. So there I am swiping. However, we have no transition. So we didn't specify a transition between the two. And by default, it, there just isn't a transition. So maybe the next thing will be a transition. I'm not sure. So let's put mm, slide. Remember, I'll try it. I did it slide. Yeah. Okay. So now, mm, here we go. Oh, that might be something. Am I? Oh, no, that's good. It's a little bit hard sometimes. Uh, by the way, I have touch screen, so there I am now using a touch screen. But um, the it's hard to swipe with a mouse sometimes. Go find. Isn't that great? Oh, it's like amazing. And then you can also say things like, oh, I don't know. There was like, uh, what? there are different transitions. One of them is kind of fancy. It has it's something to do with dots. I think it's something like Zim dots. I can look it up. Normally, I would be taking you. I bet you that's not going to do it. No. Okay, so I have to somehow peek at the docs, and I don't have internet, so I'm going to go Control F on Zim Pages, and there it is. So there's the transition. So what pages? Um, the transition type, the speed of the transitions, and you can also do a lookup table so the different pages have different transitions what holder will it be in. So that's important if you're making your pages in a smaller container so that it can crop those correctly and a bunch of other things. So if we scroll on down here, what I was wanting to see was the parameters for, normally this would be in the docs. It's a little bit easier to look at. Um, there's pages, transitions, default is none. None, reveal. So these are the default transitions. Slide, fade, clear, black, white, and fan. But uh, the following is built into the emitter. So you can also provide an emitter. It, you remember the Zim emitter? The emitter emits particles. So what I was trying to get to was this one right here, uh, bubbles. So they were bubbles and then Zim. So there's bubbles dark, bubbles light. There's pixel dark, pixel light. So all these are available too along with these. So we're gonna use this one right here bubble and we're going to use the zim colors. There's also lines and explode. So these top three lines here go from the edges of the page and the whole edge will do these things. The explode explodes from the middle of the page. So as you go from one page to another, just an explosion and then it ends up going to the next. So let's try uh, <laughs> close huh? zip dot um, bubble zim as the transition type. And then we get this. And that transition pretty quickly. Yeah, let's. That's probably fine for sliding. But as soon as we introduce bubbles, we sort of want to see those bubbles work a little, a little bit better, don't we? <laughs> so we can adjust the time. The time is the next parameter, and say how about a one second? Because the default swipe is. Uh, by the way, for swipes, you, you do want a fast swipe anyway. Otherwise, it seems sluggish. You don't want a one second swipe on mobile especially, you know, you're, then the person swipes and it's sort of like, what's going on? But if um, if you want something like this, oh yeah. Okay, you know, see those bubbles now? I don't know, what do you think about the dark to dark? I wonder if it would look silly if it were the exact same color, I'm not sure. Maybe lines would look better. You can swipe, you can specify different ones as well. So was that lines? How are you guys doing out there? <laughs> Sometimes, oh, that didn't work, so I got the wrong wrong one. Line, maybe? The last one was just bubble singular. So if you get the wrong one, it doesn't recognize the type. Ooh, that was pretty. Ooh, so those are Zim color lines. It's almost like I wanna go dark lines when I'm coming back and light lines when I'm going forward. Can you imagine that? That should be available. 
we might have to do a transition table so that we get a different transition for each of these. Yeah, so uh, should we look up transition table and see what that's like? Or do you guys want to, I don't know, go get a cookie or something? <laughs> you know what? I, I want to do it. So I'll, I'll show you, although there's other things to do with pages too that might be important to you, such as how to get arrows to work. Oh, we got lots of examples out there with arrows hooked up. So let's, let's leave the arrows for now. I'll just do the swiping. It's really easy to go to, from one page to another. You just say pages.go page two, you know, and there it goes to page two. So you could attach that to any button or any interactivity or a timer or whatever you want. But we also have uh, Zim arrows, which are built to work with Zim pages. And so what would happen is you put an arrow here and an arrow here. Uh, the, the first one would gray out. This one would be active. You click it and the other one to go back would be active. And then on the second page, the right hand side would be grayed out and it would work with 10 pages. So by default, pretty easy to get arrows in. Like I said, we did a survey and when we first did a survey, we did a survey and we wanted arrows for the survey. And so we built Zim arrows at that time. So you can have a look at that a survey page. I'll put the links in at the bottom of uh, the YouTube video and you can try out the survey, maybe even take the survey yourself. It's a survey about Zim and take a look at some of the other um, components and stuff that we put in that survey. All right, so uh, our plan then is to just look up that transition table and see. Um, there's also uh, different ways to swipe to different pages at different in different directions. For instance, you might want to swipe this down to go to a help screen or an intro screen up to go from whatever. whatever. So you can swipe left, right, up, down, and all that happens in the pages object. If you had the docs, which you do, but I don't. Uh, here's the pages object, so it can just be an array of objects, but you can also um, say more information in there. So you can use squiggly brackets. So right here is the example. So instead of an array of object, uh, well, uh, display objects, we have an array of these things called pages objects right there. You specify the page, that would be page one. And then swipe, you specify where you want to do or what you want to go. This is going to go from, I think this is, uh, say somewhere, uh, right, left, down, up. So this is the page you want to go to if you swipe right to left, et cetera. Uh, that's up and, or sorry, down, and that's up. Okay. This thing is, if you put in a string, it will then trigger an event, an info event. So pages dot on info would be triggered if they swiped in that direction. So in other words, you can swipe and trigger an event with pages as well, rather than actually go to a page. So you've got those complexities there. Um, what we were wanting though, is to take a look at this transition table right here. So there's the transition table, an array to override general transitions with the format, hmm, it's an array. And so from page to page, transition and seconds, so that's optional. Okay, so I get it. Uh, when we go from page one to page two, we can just make them white, white lines, I think we want it, but by default. But then what we can do is say page two to page one, we can put in the transition that we want uh, so remember, it, it's a table, so it needs to be in an array. And we're going back to here. Was that the parameter after speed? I think it was. Uh, paste and take a look. I just reduce this down a little bit in size. Hopefully that's not too small for you. So we want a Zim line, or not, we want a line, but we want a light line. How do we say that? <coughs> line light. So by default, we're going to use a line light. Line light. I think that was it. But when we go from page two to page one, then we want a line dark. Uh, 
Yes, sorry. I don't know what's happened. Mm. Okay. My apologies. One sec. Animate still thinking. Okay. Oh, I don't have internet. Um, okay. And open up animate. You know what? I don't have internet and Microsoft doesn't know what my last files were. I think what that means is Microsoft is storing my last files in the cloud. It's like, uh, or programs. Anyway, uh, animate, animate. Doesn't even recognize it until I type practically the whole thing. So let's try opening up animate again. See where we got to. Uh, what do you think? I save it pretty regularly. <laughs> Hopefully it's around still if I need it. Um, okay, and paths. That wasn't what I was working on. <laughs> Uh, file open, recovered 13, but there should be a 13 here. Let's just check the non-recovered. Yeah. All right, we're fine. I must say, Adobe Animate has been great. It hardly ever crashes. I mean, very, very rarely. So that's always nice. Page one. So we want page, uh, when we go from page two to page one, then we want a transition of line dark. Agreed. Oh, and this is how many seconds, which we don't want to override, so I think we're fine. And this is the only transition in the transition table. Sometimes when, that's, when that happens, we just let you put one thing there and we say, oh, if you've only got one thing in there, it's not holding arrays. But anyway, it's supposed to be possibly many different ones of these. So, Good. Shall we check? Bum, 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 bum. Ooh, there goes white lines. Did you see them? Lines. So, uh, white lines, dark lines on this side. White lines on this side, dark lines on that side. <laughs> Great. I wouldn't mind speeding that up just a touch. So maybe we go like 0. 0.6 seconds and let's have a look. Now, since it's going faster, the lines spread out a little bit more. That's pretty impressive. Okay, there we go. Nice, huh? You probably were wanting to try an explosion. <laughs> anyway, you'll have to do that. You'll have to do that yourself. Um, I am Dr. Abstract. We just went from page to page. We did that by making a page and we saw how we could position things manually. We positioned two pictures manually using lazy loading. We also saw that if we're lazy loading a tile, then we need to give it dimensions. We never tried to break that. Should we try and break it? Let's just see if we don't do that on the one. That still worked. No, it didn't. It's missing one. See that? One of the tiles is missing. Interesting. So it couldn't tile it, and we go like this, and now it's back again. Okay, so it couldn't couldn't figure out what to do with that tile, and it said, nah, I'm not here, and didn't even show it. Okay, so if you're using lazy loading, that would have gone away if we preloaded. And once again, the preloading would look like, I'll open. We did some preloading in the puzzle right here. So frame.load assets, and you could specify an array of assets there. That would be an array. Uh, the example before used an array. And then in the complete, we wouldn't have to put those dimensions there because all it would know the dimensions once they've been preloaded. Okay. So uh, back in this one though, we did some lazy loading. However, we did, and by the way, in, in that uh, you can specify, let's just, let's just look back one more file. Open, boom, boom, boom. 
the book. So the book had preloading. Uh, is this the book? The heads, yeah. So we pushed a bunch of heads in there. Then we said, hey, load all of those images. There might be a lot of images. Even this, you saw those images are quite big on some computers that would, that would you know, you need, you need um, some sort of progress bar. So right in here, first one is what assets, what path. The next thing here, you just say new uh, waiter. That probably would work. There you go. If you pass in a new waiter right there, then people will see three little dot, dot, dots, and that will be taken away once the stuff's been loaded. Or you can use a progress bar, new progress bar, and then you're going to get a little circle that fills up depending on the progress. If you change the type of that to a, a, a rectangle, then you'll get the traditional bar, sort of long bar filling up. Okay, so this is when you might be waiting a while and they actually want to see the, the progress. Whereas the waiter is if they're probably, you know, if they're, you know, you've got a few assets, sounds maybe, and you're expecting it to go fairly quickly, just put in a new waiter there. Okay. So, uh, warning about that then. Great. Um, once again, we were sort of uh, recapping here. We had a bunch of picks in an array. We passed that into a tile. We set the unique to true there. Sorry for my putting the word unique in there. It should have been true. And we scaled it to the page. You saw how easy that was. <coughs> All this stuff is on page two. All that stuff is on page one. We don't bother showing any. Once we've, once we've said, hey, this page is good, then we can remove that thing because it's pages that will do the adding. However, you do need to remember to add the pages right there. So remember to add the pages, not the other things. And then the pages keeps track of all that. We only saw two pages. You can do multiple pages. When we code in Zim, if we were doing multiple pages, like lots of different pages, we would throw them in uh, remote JavaScript files. So this page is in a JavaScript file or at least model view controller. So there's patterns to handle like bigger, bigger apps. And we have examples of that on the Zim site under model view controller, for instance. Actually, we have an Adobe Animate um, example as well with model view controller. So have a look for that. Okay, I'm Dr. Abstract. We didn't really go through the responsive layout stuff. Uh, we could do that one day, but we'll you know, work our way through it. There's all sorts of things that we still, nice, quick, easy things that will help you build more in Adobe Animate that we want to show you. So that's me, that guy there, yay. Sorry I don't have internet, I can't show you stuff. I'm really sorry I don't have internet. Not necessarily for you guys, but for me. I'm doing a big event tomorrow, I'm freaking out. Ah! Uh, so thank you, you've been a bit of therapy, keeping my mind off problems uh, as I make these tutorials for you. All right, cheers. Have a good day or night. Come on in to zimjs.com slash discord or zimjs.com slash slack and say hi. Really, please, please do. Um, very friendly. I don't get out into the Adobe forums all that much for a number of years. I kind of knew they were there. It was very hard for me to go into those forums after the crash of Flash. You know, it just like it really hit me hard. I, I coded with Flash for 10, 20 years or whatever. Absolutely loved it. Um, I'm happy in the end that I was able to make Zim to sort of recover from all of that. Uh, and Zim is, you know, really taken off. It's wonderful. I can do everything I want without Animate. But you guys are still in Animate uh, for, for I'm sure, good reasons. You know, I mean, you might be doing some timeline animation stuff. And that's great. But all of the things, or most of the things, for the most part, all of the stuff that I've been showing you in these tutorials can be done just, uh, just in a text editor without animate. However, it's good for you to see them in animate so that you can combine. All right, <laughs> blah blah blah. <laughs> Bedtime, I think. Have a good day or night. Ciao. Oh, I was, uh, right. I was just trying to finish the thought there though. I'm not out on the Adobe forum all that much. It was difficult, a little difficult for me to be there. The other reason is I don't wanna step on toes, so to speak, or try and, you know, get people to come over to use Zim without using Animate. 
So I have the deepest respect for Animate. You, you guys go ahead and keep on using that if you want. I'm just telling you that, um, <laughs> that I no longer do uh, and have been able to make tons of things without it. Okay, but uh, all, all the best. Goodbye and uh, take it easy. Ciao.